know who's to shove it. Man! It's been a few videos since we've had a full episode of Ring of the Hawk. It's been an even longer time since we've had a wrestler that wasn't a cruiserweight on it. So I thought this week we'd go to the polar opposite and see if there's any fat guys who are willing to do the J-O-B to the Hawk. Today's video was recommended by Michael Sean on Patreon and Jeremy Stanley in the YouTube comments section that also got hundreds of votes. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up on Patreon today. Just a quick reminder of the Ring of the Hawk rules. These rules are completely separate to Rob Terry rules. That's something completely different entirely. 30 or less matches, only main shows and pay-per-views count, which is why WWE ECW, for example, wouldn't count on this show. The Hawk is only interested on if you can perform on the main roster here. I'm dead serious though, I really want to get our first A on Ring of the Hawk. I can't believe we've still not had anyone. Am I too fussy? The criteria for me for a wrestler to get an A would be that they'd have to have some great matches, cut some good promos and be enjoyable to watch. It's not enough for me for them to just have good matches. You can't be a star if you can't cut a promo. Remember, we're trying to find potential stars for the roster. I was thinking about maybe Desmond Wolfe, but he had 33 matches, so we'd have to bend the rules to include him. Let's make it our mission to get our first day in April. So if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shut their name in the comments, Jack! All right, all right, Big Daddy V, did he make the girls pee? V had many gimmicks in the WWF. Mabel, Viscera, the world's largest love machine. But here he is, Big Daddy V. He's basically a topless Viscera with small black straps and I think he has a grill, or he has some dodgy dental work going on. He's described as ECW's Mastodon. Both ECW and Mastodons went extinct. Great, so he's a short fat mammoth on the complete failure that is WWE ECW. Not much of a nickname if you ask me. He wrestled this gimmick for a few months on the ECW brand, but we can't count that on Ring of the Hawk as I mentioned earlier. So let's get on to what you're all interested in and why you're all here. The main roster matches. Match 1, No Mercy 2007, ECW Championship. Big Daddy V accompanied by Matt Stryker versus CM Punk who's the hometown hero here. Big Daddy V looks livid to be wrestling him. V throws Punk across the ring so he goes to the outside and rethinks his attack. Back in the ring, Daddy takes him down again and ugh. What is this? I feel sick. That is disgusting. He's larding his belly all over Punk. Somehow Punk fights out of that one and tries to get back at him. And then Daddy misses a splash in the corner. Punk nails the big man with a top rope drop kick. Suddenly Matt Stryker gets in the ring and the match is thrown out. Pretty pointless. Big Daddy V continues the attack after the match and he hits a Samoan drop. And I was 100% fine with this. He hits a few heavy elbow drops and that's it. A strange match to be put on pay-per-view. And that move he did while Punk was on the ground? I'm sorry, but it takes a lot to make this Hawk feel sick. I spend my whole free time watching bad wrestling matches, so it takes a lot to get to me. But that move was pure vile. Punk coughs up blood after the match. I don't think this was the best match to have for the hometown hero. This match was short and shouldn't have been on pay-per-view. V did absolutely nothing to make me want to see him again. So it's an F for his Ring of the Hawk debut. Oh god, is that Road Dogg's dad? Do you know guys, I've recently been watching a feud with a certain somebody on NWA TNA. A wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Match 2, Smackdown Triple Threat. The Miz versus John Morrison versus Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker. This match is for the ECW title number one contendership. Miz and Morrison decide to work together but it doesn't last long. Daddy V tries to press slam Morrison, but it just looks a bit bad. He beats the small guys up in the corner and he hits a 500 pound splash in the corner. He sends both of them to the outside and he tries another attack on the post, but he misses this time. Miz and Morrison keep fighting each other because they're stupid, I guess. Although they do get back in the ring, which is smart because it takes V about 10 minutes to get back in the ring. He can barely move. Miz stupidly sends himself to the outside of the ring where Big Daddy V's waiting and he hits him with a clothesline. V's now back in the ring and he hits a Samoan drop on Morrison. He carries on his attack with a huge side slam and then he knocks Miz out with an elbow drop. It's over. This was a lot better to be fair. This match made him look like a threat. I'd rather pretend this was his debut and give it a C. Match 3, Survivor Series 2007, 5 on 4 match. Mr. Kennedy, Finley, Big Daddy V of Matt Stryker, MVP and Umaga versus Kane. The rest of our guys team bail whilst the entrances are going on, but V seems to have a sort of feud going on with Kane. 
and he'll be teaming up with Rey Mysterio, Jeff Hardy and Triple H. A lot of big players in this one, a lot of guys who are still wrestling to this day. MVP boots Jeff Hardy in the back and he hurts his own knee, so he tags Big Daddy V in, who clubs Jeff Hardy in the back. He scores a knockdown with a right hook. V then squashes Hardy by trampling on him. Jeff looks like he's in trouble, but he manages to tag Kane in. It looks like the Red Machine's gonna beat him up, but V hits him with a belly to belly for a two count. Kane fights back by squashing V in the corner, and he follows that up by flying through the air like the Hawk to hit a clothesline. Kane is then distracted, and V hits a Samoan drop just like it should be done. V then hits the elbow, and damn, he pins Kane. Triple H charges into the ring to attack him, but V knocks him down too. He tries a splash, but the game dodges, so V tags in Umaga. I'm intrigued so far, he's being made to look like an actual threat. This is a really good match, I love watching Umaga, and he eliminates Rey Mysterio. It's now 5 versus 2. Hardy eliminates MVP with the twist of fate. The game then hits a spine buster on Anderson. You can see V in the background just struggling to climb over the top rope. He tries to do an elbow drop on the game, but he dodges it and he squashes his own partner. Triple H then sends him to the outside and the game covers Kennedy and he's out. V's embarrassed so he attacks the game around the outside of the ring and he squashes Hardy into the ring post. V gets back in the ring and beats up the game and Hardy and he tries a charge in the corner but he misses and the game and Hardy hit him with a double DDT and they eliminate our guy. They tried to make him look like a monster but then he looks kind of useless and clumsy at the same time. He did quite a lot here though and he did eliminate Kane so it's a C. The match is won by Jeff Hardy and Triple H after a pedigree swanton bomb combination. Match 4, Smackdown, the Big Red Machine versus Big Daddy V accompanied by Matt Stryker. I have no idea why this guy is even his manager. I've not actually seen either of them talk. Kane starts out with kidney shots and backs V into the corner. Kane hits a couple of clotheslines, but V switches it around and digs him back in the corner. V manages to hit his splash and then he walks all over Kane. Big Daddy V hits a bad slam on Kane and it doesn't look great and then oh no not again get off of him. Kane gets annoyed about a disgusting move and he tries to fight back but V immediately shuts him down with a clothesline. The V man then misses the headbutt and Kane gets a two count on a drop kick. Kane then hits the big time leg drop for another two count. He heads to the top but Matt Stryker gets to the ring and Kane takes him out of a clothesline and then the match is just thrown out. Kane whacks V of a chair shot after the match and that's pretty much it. Not great, Shut it's an S. Man. Match 5, Smackdown. Big Daddy V, accompanied by Matt Stryker, teams with MVP to take on the Big Red Machine. V is taunting him during his entrance, and he grits his teeth at him. And Kane also teams up with Rey Mysterio. MVP struggles against Kane and chills on the outside, but V's too tired from doing nothing and stands on the ring apron watching. The good guys isolate MVP for ages, and V takes a cheap shot from the outside, and then he finally tags into the match. V chops Kane down in the corner whilst gritting his teeth like a psychopath. V follows it up with the world's largest belly to belly, but somehow it's only a one count. Who gets a one count off of that? MVP comes back into the match despite struggling earlier on. Well, as I alluded to, he doesn't do well again, and Mysterio is about to put him away, so V distracts the referee, and Matt Stryker interferes in the match. V comes back into the match and he squashes Ray Ray. V tries to press Mysterio whilst his whole body vibrates, but Ray lands on his feet. He charges, but V hits him with a big time side slam again. V then delivers a V chop and then he misses a splash which enables Ray Ray to tag Kane in. Kane and Big V fight on the apron, but neither man seems hurt. Kane and V carry on fighting on the outside whilst Ray Mysterio wins the match whilst that's all going on. Decent again, he could just do a getting some wins at this point, it's a D. So this all seems well and good so far. But I want to hear him cut a promo now. I'm not even sure I've ever heard this guy speak before. I'm guessing he doesn't sound good, but come on. Match 6, Smackdown main event, handicap match. Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker teams up with the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Damn, this is a huge team. They look so funny stood next to each other, they look like brothers. They'll be taking on The Undertaker. This is a handicap match with both men in the ring at once. Taker starts out striking both of the big boys before they back him into the corner. Henry squashes Taker in the corner whilst V takes a rest from doing absolutely nothing. Taker starts fighting back and he knocks V down with one big boot and then he disappears to the outside. Taker decapitates Henry with a leg drop and then V comes over to start fighting him, but Taker shoves him into the ring pole. A few moments later, V hits the world's largest Samoan drop, but all I want to know is, how the hell does Taker kick out? Taker starts booting them in the nutsack and then he squashes the two big boys in the corner. Taker stupidly tries a double choke slam, like that was ever going to work. 
Mark Henry throws Taker into V's elbow. It's simple stuff, but it looks more painful when you're the size of Big Daddy V. Mark Henry decides to allow V to squash him and Taker in the corner at the same time. V then tells Henry to do the same thing in return, but Taker fights back as Henry crashes into V. Taker then hits an awful chokeslam on Mark Henry, and it's over. Terrible finish. V attacks Taker after the match and knocks him over. Big V then hits the nicest move of this run as he hits a ginormous choke bomb. Beautiful move. The big boys take turns dropping their full weight on Taker. They then decide to do a double torture rack, and then Edge appears in the ring. He'll be facing Taker at the pay-per-view. I enjoyed this one. I genuinely feared for Taker. Although it was a short match, what else do you want from a main event before pay-per-view? It's a C. Well, at this point, I figured he wasn't going to get any promo time on the main shows, so I decided to delve a bit deeper and see if he did any talking on the B-show, ECW. The answer is yes, but not much. And boy, was it scary. Me, Matt Stryker flanked by these two mountains of ebony flesh. Kane, your decade of destruction, fire, and brimstone, it'll all be over at Armageddon. Match 7, Armageddon 2007. Kane teams up with Punk versus Big Daddy V and Mark Henry with Matt Stryker accompanying them. So they both lost to the big brother, so now they're moving down a slot to face Kane. Mark Henry wrestles most of the early part of the match. Have we seen V pinned yet? I'm not sure. Well, there was that Survivor Series match, I suppose. V comes in and tries to chop down Punk, and then he runs into the wall of V. Punk gets sent to the outside, and Stryker takes a cheap shot on Punk. V press slams Punk, but he doesn't land on his feet. He then tags Mark Henry in. The world's strongest man screws up eventually, and Kane comes in. Kane dominates, but he gets distracted by V on the apron, and he comes back into the match. Kane tries a choke slam, but V fights it off with a lovely choke bomb again. V starts crushing Kane, and he also hits a short arm clothesline. It looks like it's game over as he hits a splash to Kane's back. Then, oh no, not this again. I get that this would squash someone and really drive the air out of them, but it's just not pleasant to watch. Despite dominating, V decides to tag Mark Henry back in. They take turns beating Kane in the corner. Kane then hits V with a boot, but it doesn't knock him down, and V knocks him down with a clothesline. How weird that they've chosen to isolate Kane here. Kane hits a running DDT on Henry, and then he finally makes the tag to Punk. Punk has fun hitting knees on Big Daddy V, as he's got a lot to aim for. He manages to bring him down to one knee. He tries to finish him off, but he sort of misses, and then nothing happens. Punk looks like he's going to win, so Stryker starts distracting him on the ring apron. Punk tries to springboard into the ring, but Daddy catches him on his shoulders and BAM! What a Samoan drop that is! He makes the pin and it's over. Loved the finish of that one. This is what we needed to see. It's a B. I had a weird feeling that I'd enjoy this run a bit more than you lot would have predicted. Sometimes it can be a chore watching all these matches back to back, but so far I've been enjoying this. Where I'm from, we call that a surprise punch to the gut. Match 8, Smackdown 6 Man. Rey Mysterio teams with CM Punk, Kane, to take on the Big Daddy V, Mark Henry with Matt Stryker and also MVP. V doesn't really seem to want to do much in this one. It's all MVP who gets isolated. He eventually does tag Big Daddy V and as the crowd react with worry for their hero. Punk outpaces him but he can't take him off his feet and Big Daddy then catches him with the side slam. V squashes Punk on the floor and then he throws his head into Henry's massive meathead. This is the team I never realised I needed. V comes back in and presses Punk as he crashes on his back. Then he squashes him again. V literally never goes for the pin though. It's weird. Is it because it'd be too tiring getting down and getting back up again for him? When you weigh almost 500 pounds, I'm sure it would be exhausting. He tags MVP in instead. Punk has been cut off for a very long time. Someone's screaming, welcome to the ghetto. Not sure who. Punk finally tags in Kane and he's winning. So V comes in, but Kane boots him to little effect. And then they brawl on the outside. Mysterio hits the 619 on Henry, followed by a cane choke slam, followed by a Mysterio dive, and it's over. I'm not sure what went wrong here. V barely did anything compared to the previous matches. This oh, one's an man. S because literally everyone else works so much harder than him. Despite not really finishing his feud with Kane, Big Daddy V decides to move on to his brother early. Match 9, Smackdown, Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker versus The Undertaker. Taker starts out boxing the big man, but pretty quickly V floors him with a clothesline. He delivers the V chop, but all it seems to do is annoy Taker. V cuts him off with the headbutt and then hits a splash in the corner. That's like getting hit by a small cow in a golf cart. 
Taker fights Bat with a DDT, but he only gets a two. Undertaker then has to help him get up because he's so heavy. Taker goes old school, but V jabs him in the gut. He then sends him to the outside where Matt Stryker takes a cheap shot on Taker. The dead man beats V up on the outside and then he struggles to get him back into the ring. Undertaker hits two splashes in the ring and a big boot and he follows up with a leg drop but it's only a two. Big V makes his way to his feet, unassisted this time, and Taker hits him with the choke slam. But Big Daddy V kicks out of the choke slam. The commentary team are in shock, so was I. Taker nails old school and then he charges at V who crushes him with a side slam. V tries to pin him, but Taker goes for a triangle choke. V fights him off with a scoop slam and hits a splash to the dead man's back. Then he starts squashing him, but Taker locks on the submission and V starts tapping out of nowhere. He's bleeding from his mouth. Jesus, it's over, that looked brutal. Mark Henry comes out and he's screaming at Taker that he's gone too far. I had no idea that these two were such good friends. Who knew these guys could care so much about each other? So Big Daddy V comes off strangely sympathetic here. A good match again and a pretty cool ending. I just wish he wouldn't hump people and squash people, but it's all good apart from that, so this is a C. Match 10, Royal Rumble 2008. Big Daddy V enters at number 24. He hits a big side slam on The Miz. He then heads for Kane as they continue their little feud. His friend Mark Henry is the next entrant, so they should have a good chance. The big boys work on CM Punk. V tries to eliminate Morrison and Kennedy next at the same time. Maybe he should just concentrate on one at a time. It doesn't work for him and he starts trying Mick Foley instead. Batista then starts pounding on him in the corner whilst V sits on Foley's head. V chokes Kane and then nails the choke bomb, but he still hasn't eliminated anybody. The game then enters and hits a face buster on V and then he chucks him out. I knew he was screwed the second I heard the game's music hit. Zero eliminations despite his size and despite the fact his tag partner was there to work with. It has to oh be an S. Man! Super Cena eventually eliminates Triple H to win the match. Match 11, SmackDown main event. Kane teams with his brother The Undertaker to take on Mark Henry and Big Daddy V of Matt Stryker. I'm looking forward to this one. They've had some good bouts so far. Kane and Mark Henry have a bit of a botch, but it's not our guy, so it doesn't matter. So why am I saying it then? Punch me in the gut. Stop complaining. Shut up or I'll smack you one. V comes into the match with Kane and he gives him the V chop. Kane strikes back, but V drives him into another corner. V then gives him the knees in the corner. Kane tries to fight back again and Taker gets the tag. Big Daddy V scores a clothesline knockdown on Taker and then he lets Henry back into the match. Kane is cut off for absolutely ages but Henry wrestles most of the match. In fact, all that V does is a splash in the corner. The Brothers of Destruction deliver a double choke slam to V and then another one to Mark Henry. Taker locks on that same submission as last time and Mark Henry taps out and Henry bleeds from the mouth also. Another bad showing. I'm not sure what's happening. Is he suddenly struggling to move as much? He's literally gone from being fairly active in the matches to one move. And he's gone from B's to S's. Yeah, this match disappointed me and it was boring and one-sided. I also missed that cool spinning wheel kick that he did when he was Viscera. Maybe he can't do it at this weight. Missed opportunity though. Match 12, Smackdown main event, six-man tag. Accompanied by Ranjit Singh, it's the great Kali. And he teams up with Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker and also MVP. They'll take on Batista... Finley with Hornswoggle, and The Undertaker. I get the feeling that MVP is going to have to do a lot of hard work in this one. V comes in, but he shouldn't have bothered because Batista shoulders him straight in the gut. Taker starts to headbutt Big Daddy V in the corner. He wrenches on his arms as his boobs jiggle constantly. I can't help but draw attention to this one. Come on, guys, it's been 12 matches. Cut me a break. He wasn't exactly skinny at the start, but it now feels like he's gaining on a weekly basis. Taker eventually goes old school to bring Big Daddy V to one knee, but then MVP causes a distraction and V floors Taker. Finley comes into the ring and V easily deals with him. Or should I say he barely deals with him, he just hits a scoop slam and tags out. He just seems like he doesn't want to take part at this stage. This match is really boring, but at least Big Daddy V gives Taker the Samoan drop, I love watching that. Everyone starts hitting their finishers, but the referee throws the match out. Another poor performance, it's an S on the Match 13, Smackdown, not the main event. The Undertaker versus Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker. Big Daddy starts out pushing Taker around. He chokes Taker and beats him in the corner. Taker starts working on his arm again, but Stryker jumps up on the apron. When Taker turns around, V turns him inside out of a clothesline. Matt Stryker keeps on interfering and he boots Taker on the outside. This just seems to upset Undertaker even more and he takes it out on Big V. Eventually, the big man fights back by slamming him into the steps. He actually covers him in the ring for a two, probably because he's already down on the ground at this point, so it wasn't as much effort for him to make the pin. Taker then dodges the corner crash and he scores a knockdown. 
He goes old school and then follows it up by clotheslining him out the ring. Taker hits the leg drop across the ring apron and he comes into the ring with a DDT and it's over. I've never seen that DDT end a match. I wonder if he was supposed to kick out here. So now he's gone from kicking out of choke slams and tapping out because he has internal injuries to losing to a simple DDT. And not even a very good one. This match also sucked and it did nothing for him. It's an S. Taker gives a choke slam to Matt Stryker after the match and puts the submission on. So now he's got all three of their little crew to bleed from their mouth. Match 14, No Way Out 2008 Elimination Chamber match. MVP versus Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker, who surprisingly fits in the pod quite easily, versus the great Kali with Ranjit Singh, versus Finley versus Batista versus The Undertaker, with those last two guys starting the match out. The first man released from his pod is our guy, Big Daddy V. He chops both the guys and knocks them down with clotheslines. He squashes Taker with the Samoan drop, and as usual, he doesn't bother making the cover. He then turns his attention to Batista and hits a scoop slam. V then headbutts Undertaker, who suddenly falls out the cage door. It doesn't look like it was supposed to happen. V squashes Batista in the corner, but again no cover is made. He soon pays for it as Batista levels him with a spinebuster. He then clotheslines V over the top rope, and V crashes onto the metal. Taker DDT's Big Daddy V on the metal, and Batista makes the cover, and he's out. So in what would be Big Daddy V's biggest stage of this gimmick, he's completely the bed and let us all down. He barely did anything, it's pathetic. Oh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't often see a guy eliminated before anyone else has come into the match. It's an S. Oh, by the way, Taker and Batista go all the way in the match, and it's won by Taker after he hits a beautiful tombstone. Match 15, Smackdown, Big Daddy V with Matt Stryker versus Jeff Hardy's stoner friend, who's already in the ring. V looks angry for losing at the pay-per-view, and he throws the friend into the air. Shannon starts trying to use his speed, but V hits a big time side slam. V then properly stands on him and uses up the referee's five count to squash him. Big Daddy V then hits the V spot and he tosses the friend across the ring. Big Daddy then misses the splash in the corner and the friend hits a drop kick, but he can't even take V down. He's determined to try though and he starts trying to chop V down, but then he gets caught with the Samoan drop. V then hits the elbow drop that he's not done in a while and the entire ring almost collapses and the world almost implodes on itself. And it's over. It was a fine match, but the damage is probably done. It's too late to let him win job matches now. He's already lost convincingly to The Undertaker, so what are you building him up for? It's a D. Match 16, Smackdown, final match. Big Daddy V of Matt Stryker versus Balls Mahoney. This is not how I imagined it would end. V clotheslines him and stands on him. V then hits the side slam in the corner and he hits the V spot. He hits a charge in the corner and a Samoan drop. Then The Undertaker's music hits. Jesus Christ, Taker, leave him alone. You've already destroyed this guy's gimmick and career. What's he ever done to you? Taker kicks Big Daddy V out of the ring. Taker then hits the choke slam on balls. What a dick The Undertaker is. It was fine while it lasted, but the match was just thrown out even though V had it won. It's a D. This match ain't making anyone pee. So this might have been his final match on Ring of the Hawk, but he did have one final match on the B show ECW, so we can't include it for grading. However, he faced CM Punk in the main event as his last WWE match. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but he definitely looks bigger than ever in the final match. Punk almost dies in this match, and he wins by count out. What a way to go out. It might shock you to know that he carried on wrestling for a few years after this before passing away in 2014 at the age of 43 from a heart attack. He'd reportedly tried to shed the weight, and he was down to around 300 pounds at the time, but it was just too late. The weight from his body had put too much of a strain on his heart. The damage was done. This is kind of a hard one to grade, because I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. He definitely got worse in the second half of this video. If I was just grading the first half of this show, it would honestly have been a C. But if honesty was my best policy, I'd punch myself in the gut. And that might surprise some of you to see him getting such a big grade. However, the second half was bad, and he barely moved or did anything. So it's a D overall. I would still give him a place on the Ring of the Hawk roster under strict guidance that he must lose some weight because he's a decent big man when he can actually move. And you've got to think of him as a spectacle for the fans at home. For casual fans to see a guy this size, it's probably quite interesting to see how he'll get on. Remember, casual fans do not know. This guy has already had several failed gimmicks and injured a load of wrestlers. They don't know that stuff. All they see is a 500 pound beast in the ring and they fear for the guy he's facing. On the next episode of Ring of the Hawk, we'll try to score our first date. So remember the criteria, and get it right. Otherwise I'll tell you that you're full of